Hey guys, I'm Misty if you don't know, and I usually do food showcases of the island of Oahu. And today I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna be your tour guide, your virtual tour guide. If you've never been to Oahu and you wanna visit and see all the sites, I'm gonna compile this whole video into one. You can pick and choose where you wanna go to or do all of them. You can probably do most of this in a day if you start very early, or you can break it up into two days if you're visiting and you have more time but I'm going to show you different places to go to as a tourist or even if you're a local and you didn't know that existed you can come visit or revisit if you've been here before so come along with me on a tour of Oahu <laughs> Our first stop here is the National Cemetery of the Pacific. If you're into history and U.S. history, this is a place to go to. If you noticed uh, coming in, you see the kind of sculpture that's in the middle of the cemetery. And that is famous in the opening credits of Hawaii Five-O. So let's take a, a look around. It's really huge and um, we'll just go through the most popular places here. So there it is, what I was talking about. The opening credits of Hawaii Five-0 feature this portion of the cemetery. And it's otherwise known as Punchbowl Crater because this cemetery is in a extinct volcanic crater. We'll go up the steps and see some of the graves up here. If I'm not mistaken, I haven't been here in a while, houses a lot of unknown soldiers that passed away in World War One and Two, And every year or so, with our technology, with DNA and all, they've been finding and matching some of these unknown soldiers and reuniting them with their families, which is a pretty cool thing. So this is what I'm talking about. I guess this little star here. The symbol indicates that their remains have been recovered and identified. So this is a list of all the unknown or lost soldiers. And some of them, like this guy, Mr. Lindquist, has been found. It's pretty amazing because this whole wall is just full of soldiers that had passed away. That's a lot of people. And you turn around and there's just more and it just goes around and around. And it makes you think about how many lives had been lost. So just to show you how big these names are, that was the one I just came from and it's marked the Korean War. And you go up the stairs, there's some more. This is also part of the Korean War some of the missing MIA guys. And over here is World War II. All down there. Each one has names that go around and around. So this cemetery is very vast. It goes all the way up that part of the crater. Can't see it because of this tent. They use this tent for ceremonies and sometimes US presidents or dignitaries come here. But it goes all the way up there and then all the way up here. I have a relative buried here. And to be buried here, if you're not from uh, Oahu, 
you must have um, been a veteran of any U.S. Armed Forces. So um, I don't believe you have to have fought in a war or anything. You just had to be an active member of the military. I don't believe there's much space here anymore. So the rest of the veterans now get buried in Kaneohe at the Hawaii Veterans Memorial Cemetery over there. So let's go visit somebody famous if I can find his grave and it might take you back memory lane in recent history. So this is section D if you're looking for him, if you're interested. And this is Mr. Ellison Onizuka. If you remember him, he was an astronaut in the Challenger 51L that exploded off Cape Canaveral or Port Canaveral. And uh, he was a local boy from Hawaii that was a colonel in the U.S. Air Force. And that uh, Challenger exploded in the year 1986. And I remember watching it in school because we were watching the takeoff since he was a local boy and it was unexpected and exploded right after takeoff. And I remember the teacher panicked and turned the TV off right away. So if you're interested in the history of Mr. Onizuka, since he's a U.S. astronaut from Hawaii, uh, it's right where you enter. We entered right here, we went around, and then you make a loop back and it's right here. You can park on the side of the road because there's another lane. It's a one way, so there's another lane for cars to pass you. So just remember section D and he usually always has flowers on his grave. Somebody always puts flowers there or like a US flag sometimes. So that's a little piece of history. And right when you exit, there's a beautiful view. So don't forget to stop and take in the breathtaking view of Waikiki and Honolulu. There in the distance is Diamond Head Crater or Leahi. You can see Makiki from here. And it's a nice photo op spot. Although it is a concrete jungle, but it's a pretty nice view. Um, you probably can't see because the GoPro is pretty far out. It's a super wide view, but you can see the ocean there. So when you're here in person, the ocean's closer and it's a nice view of town. Off to our next stop. was for, but I'll look it up and maybe type it on the bottom. You can see, unfortunately, all the concrete jungle buildings surrounding this place. Very pretty grounds. Across the street is King Street, and I'm not so sure if you can see him, but we'll go closer later, but that's the statue of King Kamehameha that is very famous. So if you want to come here, you can just cross the street and maybe take a photo of that. But here is the front of the palace. It's 
very awesome architecture built by King Kalakaua, who was known as the Merry Monarch, named after the very big hula festival on the big island. And he was named that because when he built this palace, he liked to entertain people and throw parties and people had a good time. I highly recommend taking a tour here. You can go inside, look at the original furniture, bedding, I believe um, there's dresses of the queens, and all sorts of great information about this place. Another fun fact about this palace is that it had electricity and an elevator lift before the White House did. So the Hawaiian monarchy was very into technology and the latest things. I believe they had a telephone too. If you go downstairs and take the, I'm not sure if it's an extra tour anymore, but I remember going downstairs in the back and they would show all the medals that were given to the king um, from other countries to show how many countries were friends with the Hawaiian monarchy. So this is the entrance to the Diamond Head Visitor Center, or the State Monument, otherwise known as Leahi. I have not been here for years, so I figure I will take a walk today and exercise. Why not fit that in? I highly recommend good walking shoes. Don't be like these tourists that wear sandals and slippers and things that you shouldn't be wearing. The last time I was here, I saw some Japanese tourists wearing kind of like high heel shoes. Um, you're going to regret that. Also bring some sunscreen. And if you're not fit or, you know, you have difficulty walking, I would not do this trail. A lot of people visiting here think it's an easy trail. And I do not think so. I think it's mm, between a little bit on the intermediate easy side but I see a lot of elderly people coming here from the past and if you read the news every day there's a lot of people that need to be rescued by firefighters and they have to be lifted off this trail so if you don't think you can walk very far and going up steep uh, switchbacks then this is not for you so I see the people ahead of me have some walking sticks. That also helps because this paved area also ends. I'm not sure, but if you can see all the way at the top, they look like little ants. That's where we're going to be headed up to. And I highly recommend bringing sunscreen and, of course, water. And now comes the bumpy part. So definitely need good walking shoes.
Okay, I finished the hike. So that was a nice early morning exercise routine. Um, and I haven't been here in years, so it's nice to see the view and I'm sure you'll enjoy it too if you've never been here. Um, coming back, I'm almost to the parking lot. It took 47 minutes and 52 seconds total. And that was about a mile point three, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> out of breath, a mile, 1.34 miles. Can't see because of the sun. And so no, not too bad of a hike. If it's a little bit too difficult for you, just stand to the side. People are courteous and they'll just pass you and you can take a rest, drink some water. And the view is worth it at the end, I promise. Right, we're here at the Pully Lookout, our next stop. And if you're not from here, you do have to pay a fee to park here. But if you're local or Kama'aina, you don't have to pay, I believe, if it's the same. Kind of the same as like Akaka Falls, where there's no fee for locals. And we'll go take a look at the lookout. Sometimes it's very chilly here, depending on which season you're here, but because we're high up, there is a lot of wind. But it's not too far of a walk from the parking lot. And if you go here, in the beginning, there's an opening for the Palipuka hike, which is a very dangerous hike. So you have to be an experienced hiker for that. But here is the beautiful view of the Pali Lookout. You see all of Kaneohe Bay, you can see Chinaman's Hat, and I believe that's the Pali Golf Course. And it's a fantastic view. Not too windy today, and it's pretty clear, so you can see the Ko'olau Mountains. And this was also the area of the old Pali Road. It was an old trail in the old times. And there it is. It's blocked off. Because now they made the Pali Highway for modern cars. And this area has a lot of mana and history to it. It's where King Kamehameha had a battle and forced a whole bunch of soldiers off the cliff here. So it is said there's a lot of power here and spirits and hauntings. Uh, but I'll leave you to, for you to decide. And there's an interesting little hole here. I guess you could take a picture here. It's kind of cool. But it's very green here. It's even greener and gets very foggy during the winter time. And here's some pictures of the old Pully Road with the horse and buggies and the old school cars. And it used to be a foot trail where people used to also cross on foot before cars. One very important thing as a local to a visitor, and it's the hard, nasty truth of Oahu anyway, never ever leave anything in your car when you stop at a site. Doesn't matter if it's a hiking site, even when you're shopping at a shopping center. Never ever leave your bag or anything of value in plain sight 
within your vehicle because the criminals, unfortunately, are here and we have a lot of uh, petty theft um, where they don't bother you per se, but they'll look for crimes of opportunity. So they'll watch you walk away and they will break your windows of your rent-a-car, which sucks. You're going to have to pay for that. And they will steal all the stuff in the car. Even if you don't have anything in the bag, what looks good to them, uh, it could be a bag of dirty clothes, they're going to break your windows for it and discover that there's nothing in there. But um, I wouldn't even hide my wallet or anything, your purse under the seat, or stop at the place you're going to and open the trunk and put your bag in there because they are watching you from the parking lot, guaranteed, and they will break into your car and find a way in your trunk to steal everything. So definitely wherever you go, um, if you're new to Oahu, do not do that. And that's my PSA for you is to keep safe during your trip and to have a wonderful trip. Now off to the next stop. This is Waimanalo Beach, and usually the whole stretch of Waimanalo to Sherwoods to Bellows Air Force Base has this beautiful turquoise water and really fine white sand. Beautiful in the background is Rabbit Island, and this is a great place if you want to go boogie boarding or just lay in the sun. Waimanalo also has lots of ranches and this is a polo club as well so you can see all the beautiful horses from the roadside. Our next stop is Lanikai Beach and Kailua Beach and if you're into going to the beach and just relaxing this is the place to go to. Of course I wouldn't come here on a weekend or a holiday because parking's very scarce. And please respect the people that live here. Um, don't block their driveways or park right in front of their driveway because there's really no parking here and you have to kind of park next to their house. So please be respectful and also be quiet and don't be noisy and pick up li your litter and you should be fine. When in Lanikai, just look for these public beach access signs and it should take you right to the beach.
And this is pretty much the view of Lanikai Beach. Today the tide is high, so there's no sand, but it's amazing. If you go back a little bit to Kailua Beach Park, if the tide is high at Lanikai, you can go over there and lay in the sand and swim in the ocean. There's lots of sand there and lots of parking. After all that driving and hiking, I stopped by Masa and Joyce for a snack. Check out my Masa and Joyce full video review on the card above. But I pretty much got a poke bowl, their famous uh, rolls. I got spam musubi rolls and an ahi roll as well, which they're famous for. And it's super delicious, a good snack to give me some energy before we head on around the rest of the island. We're gonna head up north to, on Kahekili Highway and head to the North Shore, but before we do that, we're gonna head to the Temple of the Valley Cemetery. You're wondering, why are we going to a cemetery? Well, if you go all the way to the end, there's a little hidden secret. It's called the Byodo Inn Temple, and it's been there since 1968, and it's a replica of the 950-year-old Byodo Inn Temple in Uji, Japan. And it does cost $5 to enter, but if you're into peacefulness and the architecture, I think it's worth it. There's a lot of different flowers and statues of Buddhas, a big pond full of koi fish, and it's just very peaceful and quiet. It gives you a little bit of serenity after a long day. To the right is the little hut that sells smoothies and young coconut juice if you're thirsty. And here is the gift shop. Let's look inside. The details in the architecture and the colors are fabulous. You can go in the temple, but you have to take off your shoes. And inside the temple is a big statue of a Buddha. You can also walk around the temple on its grounds. So this is what it looks like when you're walking in the front of it, in front of the pond. And I think it's pretty neat to see. And this is the view from the temple, looking towards the pond. Beautiful view, beautiful day. This is the sacred bell, and it was cast in Osaka, Japan, and visitors are invited to ring the bell, and it's believed the unique tones clears the mind of negativity. All right, our next stop here on the way to the North Shore is Chinaman's Hat. If you can see in the distance, there's a little island, and it's called Chinaman's Hat. Um, but the actual name of the island in Hawaiian is Moko Li'i and that means little lizard and it's with hawaiian mythology where they thought the island is the remains of a great lizard or a dragon's tail that was chopped off and thrown into the ocean by the goddess hiiaka it's called chinaman's hat just because it looks like a chinaman's hat you know those little cone type asian hats so that is the i guess americanized name of it but not the Hawaiian name. It's off in this beach park. So you can enjoy the beach as well. 
and if it's low tide you can actually walk out to it or use a kayak to kayak out there there's a lot of kayakers out there going out to it or coming back here now just make sure you check the ocean's uh, weather forecast because you don't want to go out there if it's rough seas and this is the park you can also go camping here i used to go camping here with friends it is open on weekends it's owned by the city and county of honolulu and i believe the campsites are over there where you can see some tents right here there's a bathroom here with a shower and um, they do check your permit so you just go to the city and county of honolulu website and get your camping permit it's really actually inexpensive to get and you can come here on the weekend and camp across the way there is Kuuloa Ranch which I will not stop there because I've already made a video there so I'll put a link down below of the video where I go into the store you can get fresh steaks brisket and ribeyes and stuff and they also have touristy things like candies and such and all that other stuff. If you're into adventure, you might want to go there and ATV, they have horseback riding and other activities. That is where part of Jurassic Park was also filmed. So they do have like a Jurassic Park ride for a fee. And if you recognize the mountains behind me, that is part of many movies. And that's why they use the ranch to film films. I'm across the street of Kulo Ranch. That's right here and you can turn inside and in that little building is where you can get the steaks, oysters and other goods to take home. And the beautiful scenery of the mountains behind it. The ranch goes all the way back if you're going to do um, horseback riding, so they'll take you in the back of the mountain range. You can experience awesome ATV rides and other things if you enjoy nature. if you come to the North Shore to try one of the shrimp trucks. I love Romy's, that's the best, but it's a long wait. But here on the right is a bunch of food trucks and the famous Giovanni's shrimp truck. So let's have some shrimp. This is a cool spot. It's got all kinds of food trucks, so you can find something for everyone here. Let's head into Giovanni's and get a shrimp plate. Thank you. 
And the best thing is they have restrooms here and a sink to wash your hands. There are many tables outside to eat here and um, you can enjoy your food outside, but there's a lot of flies and I don't like that. So I'm gonna be hanging out in my car, but look at this garlicky goodness. If you've never been to a shrimp truck here, um, they're all very good, some more than others, but you definitely have to try some shrimp from the North Shore. The line's kind of long, but it moves pretty fast because they pump out the shrimp really quick. Another place I like is Romy's, but they can take up to an hour to make food. I don't know why they're so slow, but this is the shrimp. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 shrimp for $16 straight. There is another Giovanni's in Haleiwa. However, I think the one in Kahuku has more parking because you can park anywhere on the dirt uh, roadside and there's more tables to eat at. And if you're coming with a party of other people who don't eat seafood, there are many options around here. I see some poke bowls, I see some kalbi, and some other kind of barbecue, you know, Hawaiian style barbecue or local barbecue anyway. There's some churros down there and some hot dogs and corn dogs. So there's something for everybody to eat. After you pass the town of Kahuku on the left, you'll see a bunch of stalls selling some farm goods, some corn and different types of fruit, and also some pastries and breads. Let's go check it out. There's a bunch of mangoes, pineapples, papayas, different kinds of fruit, but I think I'm gonna go try some mangoes. And over here, there's a whole bunch of stands. If you're looking for local fruits and you're not from here and they're exotic to you, you can find fresh cut coconuts, kiwis, dragon fruit, and I got a bag of mangoes. I shopped around, so just shop around, but you should give all of them your business. Um, this is Ricky's brand stall. There's different stall names and they're very nice people and their mangoes were $5 while everybody else's was seven. So they have all the same things. They have banana bread, they do baked goods, fried bananas, and um, they have fresh bananas for sale and even papayas and things. There's also Kahuku Super Sweet Corn, which is very famous here, very sweet corn. So if you uh, want a bag, you can buy a whole bag for five bucks. And if you have an Airbnb, you can grill up some steaks and eat some sweet corn. So I'm gonna try out the mangoes from Ricky's uh, brand stand. They're already sliced for you. There's a big slice here. Mmm, the smell coming out of the bag's amazing. I like mangoes. These aren't as ripe, but I like it that way. Some locals like it um, green. So this is in between green and ripe. So if you're looking for the softer ones, you gotta ask for them, because I saw a really soft bag and I don't want mushy ones, but these are uh, a little bit crisper. All you need is some shoyu and you're set.
we are heading through the town of Haliiva. And if you come through here every day, there's a little bit of traffic because a lot of people come through here to check it out. This is the section that I talked about earlier with all the different food trucks in Haliiva. And if you miss going to Giovanni's in Kahuku, you can stop by here and taste their shrimp. There are many different other restaurants and trinkets for sale and souvenirs. So go check them out and take a walk down the street and take a look at everything. The most popular shave ice is Matsumoto's and Aoki's, but if you don't want to stand in line, check out Haliiva Shave Ice. There's plenty of parking here, and you can get the same shave ice without the line. You can get different toppings and your typical ice cream or azuki beans inside from other places. And the lady was nice enough to let me film her make the shave ice. I got banana, lychee, and mango flavors. And service was quick and awesome. She's very friendly and cash only. They do not take credit cards or debit cards. Even though the sign says parking for San Lozano's, which is the restaurant right next door, you may park here. That is confirmed by the owner. This wasn't the finest shave ice I've ever had, but if there's a long line at Matsumoto's, this can't be beat. The lychee flavor really came through. I really liked that syrup. It really tasted like ly lychee, and I thought the service was really great. It was a great, cool treat on a hot day, and if you ever come to Hawaii, you definitely have to try our shave ice. Okay, we're almost at the end of our island tour, and here is Dole Plantation. Let's go inside and take a look. Here's a map of the Dole Plantation. They have a Pineapple Express train for the kitties, a koi pond, and food inside with a gift shop, and they claim to have the world's largest maze. Here's the inside of the gift shop. It's got some t-shirts for sale. When you come in, it smells very good. It's very pineapple-y. And it's got dried fruits, mangoes, leahy mangoes, papayas, and of course pineapples. There's some fragrances and soaps, hand sanitizer, and candles and more soaps all smell like pineapple. Just to give you a look at how vast this gift shop is, it is very huge. This is the inside where they sell food. And I got myself a Dole Whip with pineapple topping. These are all the pineapple plants that they're showing. It reminds me of the story of my college roommate who I took a tour of the island with and she asked me where's the pineapple trees well they don't grow on trees they're on these bushes and you can see that little pineapple growing there's a big koi pond on the property and you can see all the koi fish and you can buy fish food for sale for 50 cents you can read about the history of how the pineapple came to Hawaii but what caught my eye was the pineapple tower in Kalihi that they tore down brought back a lot of memories and of the cannery in Ivale. And if you want to challenge yourself this is the entrance to the world's largest maze. Right down the road from Dole Plantation is the Green World Coffee Farm if you're interested in coffee. There's a coffee bar where you can get made drinks cold iced coffees and hot coffees. And if you do like their coffees, you can buy and take some home. There's many different types and different flavors. And they also sell very tiny bags for samples, which are good for gifts. Okay, this is the last stop. You gotta stop at the food trucks on the side of the road when you come to the North Shore. This is Rika's Pupusas, which is El Salvadorian food. And you can see the owner making the pupusas right on the side of the road. She hand makes them and they're hot and fresh. So our last stop is Rika's Pupusas and it's a food truck on the side of the road. There are many food trucks all along your drive 
through the North Shore, so check them out. Um, this one has a cult following, and they make pupusas, and they're these flattened, if you don't know, masa or cornmeal filled, gooey, cheesy, delicious El Salvadorian food. It's usually nice mozzarella cheese with some kind of meat or beans. I got the pollo, which is chicken, and also the pork. So let's try it. Usually you put some curtido on it, which is um, a cabbage. And to compare it to something local, if you're not familiar, it's a fermented cabbage, almost like a kimchi a, in a different way, or maybe like a sauerkraut. And you put their delicious salsa on it. So let's try it with that. can see why they're so popular. There are people lined up um, with their cars all along the side of the road, even across the street, and they jaywalk across the highway just for a taste of these pupusas. They're that good. Cheesy goodness. And don't forget, they have horchata too. And if you watched my La Casita video, it's different from Mexican horchata. This one's a little bit more nutty, has very nutty flavors and a little bit more floral, but very delicious. If you've never tried horchata, try it out. So that's pretty much my tour. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you're visiting the island of Oahu, it will be hopefully helpful to you on how to plan your trip and get the most out of the whole island. You could probably do this within a day if you start early at 7 or 6.30. You would probably be done by dinner time, about five or six, depending how long you take at each section. If you're wondering, Misty, why didn't you go to Pearl Harbor? That's one of the number one spots I would have, but this week Pearl Harbor is closed due to a water main break in the base area, so that whole place is closed. Definitely go there if you have a chance. It is also free to go to, but you just have to go on their website and uh, book a reservation, so you can't just show up. So definitely look into that. And I think this tour is pretty good if you're on a budget, because most of the things are free. And if anything cost anything, it was less than five bucks. So definitely a tour on, the bud on a budget, and you can see a lot of sights and get great pictures of your vacation. So thanks for joining me and I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, press the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time on another foodie adventure. Peace out.